Sanjay Singh, you know, what, what Mr. Tiwari was also saying is to get the voters to come out. Now, there's no other party which does it better than the BJP to increase voter turnout. But having said that, what's the plan of the BJP? Because you see this huge thrust right now where the Ram Bandar is. But, you know, it's also straddling, looking at certain seats. It's identified in the south where they want to, you know, go big and maximize in the south as well. Priti, look at a situation. In South, you have Anna Malai, who is uh, kind of creating waves. Uh, but Sanjay Singh, many would say Anna Malai is a Delhi phenomena and lesser in Tamil Nadu. No, uh, I am afraid not. He may be a Delhi phenomena because he speaks well in television studios and in TV, uh, whatever new channel on place. So, but nonetheless, somebody from South is darling of media channels and uh, for media on place. That a positive point for BJP. Uh, of course, uh, in my experience, uh, whenever I have gone to Ayodhya, uh, uh, on past many occasions, that, that may not translate into that number of votes to gain BJP uh, that number of seats. But I found many people, many people, perhaps more than people visiting from North India or Central or East India, South Indian people were there. So that that impact, uh, I don't know how far it catapults into the number of seats, but of course that resonance would be there. Uh, but then uh, this same thing was being talked about West Bengal in 2019. West Bengal came out as a surprise. BJP may have a chance to maximize their seats there. Uh, Kerala, of course, is a, continues to be a challenge. But as uh, Mitab Tiwari was saying, 19 out of uh, Congress. Uh, in Kerala last time, there was a perception that Rahul Gandhi was going to become prime minister of the country. And therefore, not just Vainad. Vainad, of course, he got huge support from IUML. Uh, but also from uh, 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 the rest of the state, people actually voted. They thought that somebody who is going to represent the state okay. is going to be the, the prime minister. Uh, Tamil Nadu, of course, uh, this time, Tamil Nadu may give some positive news for the BJP. Because as it is, if you look at uh, DMK and Congress combined uh, and the rest of allies are at the peak. Uh, UP, of course, BJP will gain. Uh, I'd like to correct a bit to ask thoughts about Bihar. Bihar 2014, BJP performed very well. Nitesh Kumar was reduced to two numbers and RJD uh, very could manage few seats. 2019, of course, JD was part of uh, NDA uh, of the BJP and it was Modi's picture which BJP used to, JDU used to get 16 seats. Uh, the maximum okay. 39 okay. out of 40 was the NDA's tally. Karnataka, of course, last time there was JDU, Congress Alliance, and BJP did exceedingly, exceedingly well. In Chhattisgarh, of course, if the number goes, well, who knows, maybe uh, okay. last time they had nine, this time they have 11. So, would be targeting uh, something, uh, I think they are, they are talking charts of power is uh, for the NDA allies in total. I don't know. But the big question is, the only question to me, so far, uh, my assessment was whether, how far the BJP can go whether or how far the BJP can go from their current number of 303. All right. Okay. Ashutosh, you want to come in, but may I just bring in Sanjay Jha and I'll come to you right after that. He's been wanting to, uh, uh, you know, uh, come in for a while. But, you know, Sanjay Jha, from what uh, Mr. Singh just said, the fact is the BJP has identified and pinpointed their seats in the south that they want to go big on. Even if it is a place like Kerala where they've had little, uh, you know, traction in 2019, they know exactly the four seats that they're going to go big on and, you know, put all in, in those seats. Similarly, in other places, so there's a plan. But, you know, I want to come back to where the Mandir debate is concerned. For the Congress, Sanjay Jha, the Ram Temple has always been a dilemma. They have never known what side of the divide to stand on. They never know, uh, you know, even now, to go, not to go. There's always a sense of confusion, and the perception amongst people is appeasement, that you don't know what to do because appeasement. Oh, well, you know, I'm glad you asked the question because, you know, it links to what I wanted to actually tell you and the fellow panelists here. You know, everybody is getting into granular details about state-wise what can happen. You know, they are pretty brave and adventurous. I am not. I'm not going to hazard any guesses there. But there are two large messages that we need to keep in mind. Go back, Preeti, to the 2009 elections to 14, where you saw the big jump in the BJP vote share. So in 2009, the BJP at around 116 Lok Sabha seats had approximately 18.5% of the national vote share. That moved to 31% in 2014. Now, you know, you don't have to be a genius to know 
that that jump, which is nearly 75% jump, did not happen because overnight the voter became Hindutva. It is not true at all. Overnight, the people actually supported the BJP because they saw this big development story. Now, that is the fundamental issue that we got to keep in mind. The mistake that a lot of people are making, including the opposition, including the Congress, including the India Alliance, is to believe that every Modi supporter or voter is pro-Hindutva. I don't think that is the case. Even between 2014 to 19, the vote share goes from 31 to 37, which is like a 20% significant. But to believe that everything happened because of Hindutva is again a fallacy. A lot of it happened because of Pulwama, hyper-nationalism, etc. But clearly the BJP voters who are traditional, who will vote with the BJP ideologically, is probably in the range of 15 to 18% that I think they can take as almost like a guarantee which is the point that I'm making, Preeti. A large part of India is a swing voter base. We are not like America, which is like a few, some red states and blue states and six states will decide who's going to become the president. We are not a two-party system like the UK, which is like labor and conservative. Okay. India is up for grabs in a lot of ways. And I think it's going to be a question, in my opinion, on how intelligently the opposition is able to do some seat distribution Number two, to communicate the issues and not fall into the trap repeatedly of the BJP's Hindutva campaign. It but is you important know, Sanjay Jha, the fact is, I'll ask you a quick question and I'll go to Vashutosh. Yeah. Uh, the charge which is often leveled at the Congress is falling into its own trap. Now, I'll ask you that question again, because when it comes down uh, to the Ram Mandir, it's been a tightrope walk for the Congress. Uh, it's been a clear dilemma. You could have taken full credit for it. You were, you know, the doors of the Ram Mandir were open under Rajiv Gandhi on your watch. You were not able to even capitalize on that. Well, you know, one of the suggestions that I tell you very publicly that I have actually given to the India Alliance is that you need to tell the people of India very categorically that the BJP might say it in your manifesto that, you know, we want to build the Ram Temple, but it would not have happened had it not been for the Supreme Court verdict. And there's a big difference between the BJP's polarization campaign vis-a-vis -vis Ram Rajya. And the India Alliance should actually no, appropriate okay. Ram Rajya itself. 